This is Anil with a video tutorial for the learning lad on C programming. In this video tutorial, we're gonna see the C preprocessors, and uh, in particular, we're gonna see the preprocessor directive has defined. So, a preprocessor is a program that's gonna process our source code before it is passed to the compiler for the compilation process. So, this preprocessor offers several features called the uh, preprocessor directives for us. So, uh, we can classify them as uh, macro expansions that allows us to uh, create some identifiers and use them in our program then uh, we can uh, uh, include some files uh, using some preprocessor directives that are made for file inclusion then we have some uh, conditional compilation preprocessor directives then some miscellaneous directives so for the file inclusion we have already used you know this hash include preprocessor directive now we're gonna begin with our preprocessor directive hash defined. Let's see the syntax of this hash defined preprocessor directive. So to use any preprocessor directive, first we have to uh, prefix them with a hash symbol. Then we have to use the preprocessor directive. In this case, we are dealing with hash defined preprocessor directive. That's why we're gonna write hash defined. Then we have to write the macro name. As you can see here, a space should be added here after in this preprocessor directive define and a macro name. So the space between this hash and define is optional. If you want, you can add it or you can ignore it. So then after this macro name, we have to write the character sequence. So uh, this macro name is the identifier that we are going to use in our program. And this character sequence is the uh, characters or the values that gonna be replaced wherever we use this macro or the identifier notice that there is no semicolon in this statement there may be any number of spaces between the identifier and the character sequence but once the character sequence begins it is terminated only by a new line now we're gonna create a identifier using this hash define and we assign it with some character sequence or some value then we're gonna use that in our program and now we're gonna create a, a identify using hash define then we're gonna name it as limit and we we're gonna assign it with a value of 10 so we're gonna use this limit identifier in our for loop you know to check how many times our for loop has to run so another thing is you know this character sequence once it begins it must end with the new line so here we are writing this um, macro name or the identifier name in capital letters it is not compulsory but if you write it in the capital letters then when we read our source code uh, we'll come to know that okay we are using uh, identifier or a macro here you know just for us to read our program easily so now we're gonna use this limit identifier in our program. So first we're gonna create a counter variable. Then we're gonna use our for loop. Inside the for loop we're gonna write counter equal to zero. Then, okay, we're gonna make it to one. Counter is less than, less than or equal to limit. Then we're gonna increment our counter variable. And here inside this for loop, we're gonna print our counter value. It's gonna be percentage %d, then a, a new line, then it's gonna be counter. So here we are using this identifier limit. Uh, when we compile our program, before that compilation process, you know, our preprocessor program is gonna run. So our preprocessor first search for any macro definition. So here, this is called a macro definition. So here when it encounters a macro definition, it's gonna uh, search for that macro name or this identifier in our program. So when it finds this identifier or the macro name, it's gonna replace it with a value specified as here. So our preprocessor program is gonna replace this limit with a value of 10. Uh, we can refer this limit as many times we want. So it's gonna be for counter equal to 1, counter is less than or equal to 
10 counter plus plus after you know our preprocessor program finishes its processing so now we're gonna save our code compile it and we're gonna run it so as you can see here you know our for loop has ran 10 times that's because here you know the condition was 10 so the next thing is once a macro name is defined we can use it as part of the definition of other macro names let's say we are defining a macro called top and we can use this limit here limit plus one so we can use this top macro here also compile it and run it so as you can see here you know our preprocessor program has replaced this top with you know this uh, 10 plus 1 that's because you know this limit has the value 10 then this counter is less than or equal to 10 plus 1 that's 11 that's why our uh, for loop has ran 11 times so we can close it similarly if you want you can uh, define a string value also let's say hash define name we're gonna I'm gonna say density so here I'm gonna use a print of statement and I'm gonna refer this name identifier or the macro name so what happens is our preprocessor program is gonna replace this name with this density it's gonna be printf then in double quotes it can be anil shetty so here this uh, name will be replaced with um, anil shetty in double quotes so save it compile it and run it so as you can see here anil shetty will be printed close it and now we're gonna see why we have to use this macros in our program let's say you you're gonna write a program of around 500 to 1000 lines long and you are using macro let's say name in your program or you have to use some constant in your program all around let's say your company name here you are referring this name macro in your program several times for some reason if you have to change the name in your program and you are not using this macro then you have to go through your program that's about 500 to 1000 lines and you have to find this anil shetty and you have to replace it so if you're using a macro like this in your program then you have to just make a change here in the macro definition so the change will be reflected in your program the next thing is you can do the same thing by using a variable the advantage of using this macro is um, you know this macro is gonna run or make your code to run faster and the second thing is if you're using a variable then your variable might be altered you know in your program so if anything happens like that then it's very difficult to track that so this is it this is about uh, the hash defined preprocessor directive NC so thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe I see you in the next tutorial